Thank you. Ms. Murnane, let the record reflect that all board members are present with the exception of Ms. Kearse from Thorough Park and Mr. Redden from New Hyde Park, Garden City Park, and Mr. Toto from Franklin Square. At this time, we will have awards and accommodations. Thank you, Mr. Jaime. Yes, uh, this evening we're pleased to recognize some of our students for their accomplishments. Um, first, I'd like to call uh, Mrs. Hecht to the podium. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Yes. Okay. It is my pleasure to inform you that Fatima Rajvi, an 11th grade student at Floral Park Memorial High School, has been chosen as one of five teens worldwide to participate in the Coordinated Management of Meaning Institute. Fatima will be working with four other young adults. <laughs> from the United States, Norway, and Denmark to create products, activities, or platforms to address the hopes and concerns of teens from around the world. The five participants will receive up to $15,000 to co-create lessons and materials to help teens, young adults, communicate about difficult issues such as exclusion, diversity, differences, mental health, sexual orientation, grief, and more. Each participant will receive a $500 personal grant, training in communication skills, and access to a group of CMM Institute mentors for support. Congratulations to Fatima for this incredible, prestigious opportunity. Um, also this evening, we're honoring um, some students from um, Elmont Memorial High School and from Sawanaga High School who are members of the statewide My Brother's Keeper program. Um, first, I'd like to call up Mr. Doherty from Elmont Memorial. Good evening, everybody. I, don't have to, I usually I do it twice, but that was pretty good. Um, so we appreciate uh, being here tonight and the recognition for our young men. Um, tonight we're here honoring two young men um, and recognizing two young men that have uh, dedicated their junior year to being leaders within the Men of Elmont um, and the My Brothers Keeper Camp, uh, program. This year with uh, Mr. Jaime um, and uh, some of his efforts um, and Mr. Uh, Dr. Versani getting us into uh, the My Brother's Keeper program across Long Island and across New York State. Um, it's been a, a real pleasure to work together with other communities and other school districts um, in order to bring the boys together to discuss uh, different current topics, um, to work together on the symposium that we attended in Uniondale just a couple weeks ago, um, and start to talk about some community service projects and that sort of stuff um, as we move forward. Um, they've been part of our Men of Elmont program for three years. Um, and have done nothing but fabulous work. They're role models around the building. Um, they work, uh, you know, when they're men of Elmont leader, we always talk to the leaders that when they sign up to be a leader, um, it's a lot different than most clubs. We meet with the leaders uh, two to three times per week. 
Um, our meetings are an hour and a half long. It's all student-led. They lead the meetings. They, they plan the meetings. Um, and it really takes a lot of time out of their schedule um, to give back to the community and to present um, what it is to be, you know, to really help our students who are on their manhood journey, um, as we like to call it. Um, we have our final, uh, they're in the final stages of planning our final event for the year, um, our summit for this year, which is going to be a little bit smaller, um, but we're super excited for it. Um, and overall, they're just outstanding young men. So I'd like to recognize Mr. Terrell Lewis and Mr. Nicholas Sylvester. Second time I've gone after the tall guy. <laughs> Last time was Fachi when I was here. So it was a great pleasure to have an opportunity to introduce two of our young leaders here at Sawanica High School. These two inaugural fellows of the Sawanica High School My Brother's Keeper program and Sawanica Pride Young Men's Mentoring Group have the talent, tenacity, charisma, intelligence that will put the world on notice. A notice that says we have true diamonds here at Sawanica High School. Fritz Pajot and Garvey Dorston are not only the impetus for our mentoring program here at Sawanica High School, but the driving force that will make up not only My Brother's Keeper thrive here at Sawanica, but the Sawanica Pride Mentoring Group, a force to be reckoned with. Fritz and Garvey embody our living manhood and the kind of young men you hope your daughters one day meet. They are humble, thoughtful young men who think of others first and always how can I help Sawanica be a better place? They have high expectations for us here at Sawanica and never forget to hold my feet to the fire. Fritz, unfortunately, could not be here because he injured himself playing AUU basketball last night. He's on crutches, so everybody please give him good wishes. Um, he'd like to be here, but he just can't stand. Uh, simply put, Fritz Pajot is a natural born leader through the MBK program and the creation of the Pride of Sawanica with Mr. Reed, our social studies teacher here at Sawanica High School. Fritz has become a role model for all of our students. He is reflective and sensitive toward the feelings of others. However, he is also pragmatic, inventive, and full of charisma. In conversation about Fritz, it has been said that he may be a future politician, perhaps a president of the United States, we hope. His Maturity belies his age, and as people say, he's an old soul and has definitely been here before. In our building, Fritz has a way of uplifting those around him, with whether seeing a close friend uh, or meeting a student for the first time, he engages the person, greets him politely, and tells them he hopes they have a nice day. He is always willing to lend a helping hand. He is a forward on our varsity boys basketball team, which is why he is not here tonight. Um, he stands at 6'4", I think now he's at 6'5", and he's only 16 years old, um, but he is a starting and also a captain on our basketball team. The minute he opens his mouth, even at that size, he has a soft, kind of soft-spoken way about him. His love of the game of basketball, combined with his passion for academics and literacy, have spurred the idea of our 4 4 basketball tournament happening at Sawanica on June 3rd, where students can participate as long as they bring books for our book drive for our elementary school students. He, along with Garvey, want to engage our young people with basketball and combine it with a book drive to benefit our elementary school children. Fritz is a leader, and we can't wait to see all that he'll become. I'm sorry Fritz is not here, but he's on crutches. <laughs> he's in a lot of pain. So everybody give him a round of applause. <laughs> Garvey Dorison, who's here tonight with mom, Garvey is an incredible individual who is a kind hearted and takes care of his friends. 
He's a lacrosse play player at Salonica High School, an honor student, and he is part of our AP Capstone program, a very rigorous advanced placement program. He is described by his teachers as one of the most empathetic students they have ever come across. Garvey is determined to support and uplift everyone, which makes him a perfect fellow for my brother's keeper. His desire to uplift his school community makes him a leader in our building. His involvement in the My Brother's Keeper program and the Pride of Sawanka Mentoring Group has allowed him to practice and hone his skills and find his voice. Garvey is a talented writer, and he has excelled in our AP Capstone pro program, as I said, and will not be surprised if one day he wins a Pulitzer Prize. He's that talented of a writer, everyone. And without a doubt, he's also one of our Diamonds at Sawanka. So Garvey, come on up. Again, congratulations to all of our awardees this evening. And continuing along with our agenda, could I have approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of April 26th and the budget hearing meeting of May 4th? Move it. Move Vigo. Second read. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Is there any correspondence? Thank you. And at this time, we will have a presentation from our Deputy Superintendent, Ms. Regina Agrusa. Thank you very much. Good evening. Uh, welcome. I uh, really appreciate the opportunity to take a couple of minutes tonight to just share with um, our Board of Education and our families here um, about the recent memo that was provided uh, by the State Education Department on May 16th from our commissioner uh, that I do think will address some of the questions that um, uh, we, we just heard uh, some parents have been asking. But um, it's been a crazy school year, and we find ourselves right here now preparing for the end, and our students have been working really hard to prepare for final assessments, regents exams, final exams, um, and we're really close to that finish line. And uh, we wanted to take this opportunity tonight to really talk about what that will look like as we get ready for June. So what uh, New York State Education Department is um, sharing with us is that any student who meets the following eligibility conditions may utilize what they now call the special appeal to earn a diploma with a lower score on a Regents exam. And really what that means for our students, any of our students that take a Regents exam in June of 2022, as long as they have demonstrated that for four marking periods they have passed, they have earned a score of 65 or higher, and um, were unable to pass the Regents exam and scored a, uh, a score of 50 to 64, they would be eligible for a special appeal. And this special appeal would then provide our students with the opportunity to earn a high school credit with a region score between a 50 and a 64. And I think that this really speaks to the spirit of um, our students' efforts this school year, and it's an opportunity to acknowledge the, the body of work and the four marking periods resulting in a, a passing score of, of 65 or, or higher. This special appeal um, would provide students with the opportunity to then designate uh, uh, an SA on their transcript um, and would allow them to receive uh, uh, Regents credit towards graduation. 
what we wanted to talk a little bit about tonight is what that looks like and how that will actually be implemented for our students. The decision to grant this appeal uh, would be provided by our superintendent of schools, a student's parent, guardian, teacher, counselor, chairperson uh, can ask for the appeal. And the approval of the appeal um, is in effect for Regents exams that are offered in June, August, January of 2023, and August of 2023. June of 2023. Thank you. The grading policies that the district has in place right now, as all of you know, does um, include our Regents exams and our final exams uh, for 20% of the final grade. And so when we thought about this, we wanted to give students every opportunity to be successful. And so what we'd like to um, recommend is that the Swanica Central High School District engages in the safe, harmless rule uh, beginning this June of 2022. So what that would mean is students who would want to include their Regents exam because their final grade would benefit and would be higher as a result of using the Regents exam, then we would count the 20% and we would award their final grade, including the Regents exam. Again, only if that was benefiting the student. If using the score on the Regents exam does not benefit the student, then we would not calculate the Regents exam and they would just use their four marking periods uh, to, to, de to determine their final grade. Students must sit for the Regents exam. All of our students that are enrolled in a Regents level course must sit and take the exam. Absent students from the Regents exam would receive an incomplete, which is consistent with our board policy, and be scheduled to take the exam in August. The district will be holding a summer school program um, for all students that are eligible to participate in the summer school program uh, because they have not passed or earned a, a high school credit. Students who fail the Regents exam and are not eligible for the special appeal would be designated um, eligible to attend summer school. Our school counselors will work with parents and students during the last two weeks of June to determine which outcome would yield a more positive result. Again, the intent here is to um, provide students with every opportunity uh, to, to, to receive the highest uh, uh, final uh, grade. And that's why we call it the safe, harmless rule. That's okay, that's okay. I think really what's most important here, and, and that's, you know, the, I, I've, I've covered most of the main topics. What's really important here is that our uh, students and our faculty and our parents understand that um, our students have been uh, enrolled and receiving instruction throughout the school year, and we want to acknowledge those efforts, and for those that are able to demonstrate a score on a Regents exam that would help their overall average, then we want to acknowledge that. And for those that um, are, are able to demonstrate that their four marking periods yield a passing grade and they are able to score between a 50 and a 64, the state is allowing us to, uh, to use this, uh, this special appeal. So um, we're going we're gonna, to you know, continue to work with our uh, teachers and our uh, counselors so that they have the opportunity to provide the academic advisement to our students at the end of June. Um, and if anybody has any questions, um, we certainly can you know, take them at this time. Do any board members have any questions? Thank you, Mr. Grusa. Um, the presentation will be up on the website tomorrow. Sorry for the technical difficulties. And for parents and students in the room, uh, we will be conferring with staff um, this week, in the next few days, and then we will get this information all out to our parents and our students so they can understand and digest it. Should you have questions, of course, go see your guidance counselor if you're a student or give the, give the parents, give the guidance counselor a call and they'll help explain it to you. So thank you very much. Um, uh, like Mr. Grusa said, this is something that um, just came down from the State Education Department last week. So we've had the opportunity to review it. The vast majority of school districts in our county and on Long Island are moving in this direction. So we don't want to put our students at a disadvantage. So we want them to be graded as their peers in other school districts are being graded. And uh, we feel it's their best benefit. And um, we will continue to evaluate it as it comes along. As you know, you received an email today from us telling you that the 11th grade AP, uh, the 11th grade um, US history exam is canceled for next week. And we found that out today. 
So this is ever evolving, um, and we will keep you apprised of everything as we hear it from the State Education Department. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Caruso. Um, I'll just give my report. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so good evening, everyone. Um, congratulations again to our MBK fellows, Terrell, Nicholas, Garvey, and Fritz, and to Fatima on her on her worldwide accomplishment. I know all of you are going to be uh, what we call movers and shakers, and uh, we're very, very proud of you, and congratulations to you and to your parents, because we know your parents play a huge part in making you the people that you are today. So congratulations to moms and dads, too. We're all very, very proud of you. Um, thank you to our community for the passage of the 22-23 school budget. The tally was 2,539 yes votes to 1,300 no votes. Thank you to the community also for giving approval to expend the funds from our capital reserve, 2,841 yes votes to 1,174 no votes. We will begin the preparations for the implementation of all new student programming, our capital projects in the budget, and begin the work on the expansion of the CTE facility, the renovations of our cafeterias at Elmont, Floral Park Memorial, New I Park Memorial, H. Frank Carey, um, and Elmont, sorry, I think I skipped Elmont, and the interior renovations at Monica High School for their guidance and nurses' offices. Uh, we truly appreciate the support of all, all our communities and look forward to implementing our new projects. Um, as I said earlier, today the New York State Education Department canceled the U.S. History Regents uh, scheduled for next week. An exemption from this graduation requirement will be forthcoming from the State Education Department and it will not hinder graduation for any affected students. Um, you heard the presentation from Ms. Agrusa regarding the appeal process for all other regents examinations administered this year and next. You also heard our recommendation for a do no harm policy for this year. I support these recommendations, especially as the Board of Regents in Albany is reviewing the practice of administering regents examinations and recommends that they do not even be included in our final grade calculation. So this is again a continuing topic that we will be discussing. Um, tomorrow evening is our last portion of a graduate strategic planning meeting. Um, the latest edition of the scoop, you should hopefully have received it in your homes, if not you will soon, provides a detailed explanation of our work. Um, when the strategic plan is finalized, we will present it to the Board of Education and to our community. Uh, the portrait and plan will be our guides as we plan professional development for our staff and exciting innovative activities for all our students. Uh, please consult your school's website for many upcoming year-end events. It's the end of May. <laughs> there are only a few weeks left here, um, and the school year will come to a close. Um, our graduation ceremonies will be held at Hofstra University's Mac Basketball Arena on Saturday, June 25th, and Sunday, June 26th. The schedule for our high school graduations are Saturday, June 25th, H. Frank Carey at 3 p.m. I'm sorry. Floral Park Memorial, sorry, I, Mrs. Heck said no. Uh, Floral Park Memorial at 3 p.m. and H. Frank Carey at 6 p.m. And on Sunday, June 26th, Elmont Memorial at 9.30 a.m., Sawanica High School at 1 p.m., and New Hyde Park Memorial at 4.15 p.m. Um, this concludes my report. Um, and um, as I s uh, stated in, in uh, my uh, email home to everyone this evening, if you haven't seen it already, um, we're so saddened by the tragic events that happened earlier today in an elementary school in Texas. Um, our guidance counselors and uh, our, our support staff are ready here uh, to assist any student, staff member, or family member if they should need some assistance. And I uh, hope one day we never have to talk about this ever again. Uh, thank you, and that concludes my report. Thank you, Dr. Grisani. This time we'll present the items for superintendent board action. Uh, just before you do, this sure. is also the time where we say all our, our really studious students, if you need to go home and finish some homework or study, now's the study, now's the time to make a break for it. So if you wish to, it's okay. All righty. And parents, you're always welcome to stay for the entire meeting. But, you know, I, I understand they do have homework to do. So uh, now's the time. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you and congratulations again.
Okay. So items for um, superintendent board action under curriculum, I'd ask for a motion to approve items 3A through Y. Do you have a motion, please? Move it. Move Vigo, second leader. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Under finance and operations, I'd ask for a motion to approve items 4A through I. Moved, Ms. Rudd. Second. Second, Mr. Vigo. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Under personnel, I'd ask for a motion to approve items A and B. Move it. Move Vigo. Second. Second, leader. Any discussion? Uh, if I may, I'd just like to uh, draw everyone's attention to the fact that we're tenuring several of our teachers this evening, and we're very proud of their accomplishments, and we're also hiring um, several new teachers who are replacing those uh, who are retiring this year. So um, I thank the board for their support. Thank you, and congratulations to those teachers receiving tenure and the newly uh, retired teachers and our new teachers that will be starting in September. Um, again, I'd ask for a motion to, did I do five? I did not. Oh, and five A and B, could I have a motion, please? Move, Move Mr. Leader. Second, Mr. Vigo. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Under support services, I'd ask for a motion to approve item A and B. Move it. Move Vigo. Second, Ms. Rudd. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. <coughs> legal? On the legal agenda tonight, I there are two resolutions, A, B. A and B, and item C is board policy for action, and item D is for first review. That's the re recording and reporting of classroom performance, first review. So under section seven legal, I'd ask for a motion to approve items A through C. Move it. Move Mr. Leader. Second. Second Mr. Vigo. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries, and item D is noted for the minutes as first reading. Um, is there any old business? Any new business? At this time, we will take any members of the audience um, that would like to address the board. Please step to the podium, state your name, and ask your question. I'm Cheryl Scarry from A Train Carry. Um, I have a question about um, one of the items from the 2020 2021 budget was to install vestibules in the schools. And I believe it was also the lock systems on the doors, which I believe has been done. But I don't know what's going on with the vestibules. I, I can answer you, Mrs. Scarry. Um, that was up, you know, many of the projects take a long time to get approved by the State Education Department. So that was, um, it took quite a while to get the approval. It's been out to bid. Um, the, the bid has been awarded and construction will begin as soon as school is over. So when you return in September, you'll have all the safety vestibules and everything done. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I have a daughter at Cary. Um, I know it's not a question and answer session, so I would appreciate that Ms. Rosani if maybe you could respond to me by email tomorrow. Um, I'm sure you have my address. I've sent you a few emails, but unfortunately have never received any responses. Um, you did send an email last week and again this evening expressing your sadness due to the horrific massacres that took place in Buffalo and the one that took place in Texas this evening. Um, as we all know, all shootings that take place, whether they are in our subways in Brooklyn or against our police officers in Manhattan or here on Long Island need to be addressed, especially when they are so close to home. Um, how about letting the students know directly that there are counseling services available instead of emailing the parents? Um, my child came home from school that day. I asked her if she knew anything, number one, about the shooting. She said no in Buffalo. And I asked her, did anybody discuss with you that there are counseling services available? She said, no, nobody. Okay. Um, I, along with many of my peers, are wondering when 
the district is going to address the urgent need for armed security guards at all of our schools. Um, instead of sending emails, um, I think we need to get the security at our schools. We need to keep our children safe. Um, I don't really know what else there is to suggest, and I just think that's what it needs. That's what needs to be done. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Shudo. Right now, there there is a, a state law that only that we we can have armed guards, but. I know that's something that is under consideration, so I'll look. I'll, let me look into that. Is that and only I'll, at high schools and elementary schools? Because I know at the college level yeah, in New York that, State there are. Let me let me look into it, and I will certainly reach back Please to you. I, and I apologize for not not emailing. Okay. I must, I I must you have a few missed. Times, okay. And um, I have never heard back. Sometimes my screen delves too far. So. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? My name is Leslie Stewart. I stand before you as someone who understands tragedy too well. I am in agreement with you. I think there, there should have been some phone numbers following the email, at least some direct contact that the students had to follow up with. Um, we all know and, and saw the tragedy that happened in Buffalo, an 18-year-old white male, Peyton Gendron, had been planning this attack since three years ago, before anyone had ever heard of COVID-19. As reported, Gendron says he considered targeting a shopping mall in Rochester, New York, and one in the nearby town of Greece, as well as supermarkets in Hempstead, Long Island. Clearly, racism doesn't only show up by teenagers holding up bananas and saying monkeys, come get these. We can no longer stand together if some of us continue to live in bliss and ignorance and conduct business as usual. Today, I applaud the experts who viewed and, and, and the recent violent act in Buffalo as traumatic and have canceled the US history and government regions in efforts to support students and communities who are strongly impacted. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else? Hello again. My name is Samrin Tariq. Can you hear me okay? Just a little closer to the mic. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay. I am a parent of um, one son that goes to this school in Swanica and another one that's going to be coming, an incoming student. I'd like to present you with my son Iman Tariq's case for transfer request from Swanica High School to New Hyde Park Memorial School. Ma'am, we, yes. we, we can't discuss individual students at a Board of Education meeting, but if you stay afterwards, we'll take your information and we'll, we'll have someone contact you tomorrow. Yeah, I've already been contacted mm -hmm. from the deputy superintendent and my request has been denied. That's why I've come to the Board of Education meeting. Right, but the appeal has to be in writing, is it not? The, the, the appeal has to be in writing. The board would like to really look at this issue so we can see finally. To, with yes, the board of education. Anyone else? Okay, seeing no one else, um, our next regular Board of Education meeting will be Tuesday, June 21st. And at this time, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. Move Mr. Leader. Second. Second, Mr. Vigo. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, everyone, and have a great evening.